Alright, so all asymptotes, every single time there's a graph with dotted lines, okay? I know that on your calculator, the vertical asymptotes show up as a solid line. Do not draw that solid line, okay? And we're not going to touch those asymptotes, okay? You do not touch a vertical or a slant asymptote. Every once in a while, you will touch a horizontal asymptote, but I'm pretty sure I have an example of that. X-intercepts, okay, remember, and I'm trying to build this from the very beginning, when we were doing polynomials, and we talked about their x-intercepts, uh, we found the zeros of the function, okay, that's where you're on the x-axis, the function equals zero, well, our functions are fractions, so the only way for a fraction to equal zero is if the numerator equals zero, so that's why we're going to set the simplified numerator to zero, it's very important to use the simplified numerator, because if anything is a whole, it can't be an x-intercept. Okay? If it's a whole, it can't be an x-intercept. Um, I already mentioned the y-intercept. Every function, it doesn't matter whether it's a polynomial, a rational, we're going to look at uh, square root functions, we're going to look at exponential functions. Any function, to find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for your x value. Now, when you get out, you may look a little different depending on the function but the same premise applies. You're always plugging in zero for x. And then we'll talk about the behavior on the vertical asymptotes when we look at an example. All right, so here's our first example. Our first function that we are going to draw the function for is 2x squared minus 2x minus 12 over 3x squared minus 12. start with is do we have a horizontal asymptote? We do. The degrees are the same, so we take the ratio of the coefficients, so that is y equals, let me keep it color coordinated here, y equals 2 over 3. So as I find these characteristics, I'm going to go ahead and start putting them on my graph. Okay, I'm going to put a horizontal line at 2 thirds. Whole number, but guess what? It might not be full of nice big whole numbers. Okay, <clears throat> so just fill it in there the best you can. Yes, we're gonna do three examples. Yeah, you can just run that. Yeah, I've got another. Uh, I've got other graph paper for other stuff. So fill up that whole thing. Okay. All right. So after our horizontal asymptote need to look for holes. That requires factoring. So our numerator starts with the GCF. Take out that 2. Yes, you can factor it without taking out the GCF, but why not make life a little bit easier on yourself and take the GCF out of the bottom as well. The bottom has a GCF of 3. So, in the numerator, when we factor that a little bit further, that is x minus 3 times x plus 2. And the bottom is the difference of perfect squares, so that's x plus 2 and x minus 2. So, we're going to cancel the x plus 2's. So, we set that equal to 0. <coughs> So we get that our hole is at negative 2, but I don't just put a hole where x equals negative 2. I need to find its y value as well. So I'm going to plug that into the simplified version of my function. 2 times negative 2 minus 3 over 3 times negative 2 minus 2. So that gives us negative 10 in the numerator negative 12 in the denominator, which simplifies to 5 over 6. <clears throat> now, unfortunately, hopefully your graph, you can show a little bit more detail than I can. 5 6 is bigger than 2 thirds. Okay, 5 6 is bigger than 2 thirds. How do I know that? I can turn 2 thirds into something over 6. 
2 thirds is 4 over 6, so 5 sixths is bigger than 2 thirds, so my hole is actually above the horizontal asymptote. Now, I just touched my horizontal asymptote, but that's because my pen does not get small enough. Um, so you just need to make sure that your hole is when x equals negative 2, put your hole between the horizontal asymptotes and y equals 1. Make sure there's no more in between there. Trust me, if I ask you to do one of these by hand, I will make sure that it's We go through the horizontal asymptote and hole. Okay, I cannot stress this one enough. You have to find a lie value of that hole. If you don't, I mean, I have seen so many times people graph this just on the x axis. That's not the way it goes. Okay, so it has a specific lie value. All right, next, vertical asymptotes. Our denominator, we are left with 3 times x minus 2. Well, guess what? That 3 really doesn't matter because that's 3 doesn't equal 0, so we're only concerned with the x minus 2 is equal to 0. So that means we have a vertical asymptote at positive 2. So go ahead and put your vertical dotted line at x equals positive 2. So you should have a So those are the four characteristics that we've been dealing with um, so far. We don't have a slant asymptote because we have a horizontal asymptote. So let's look at the new stuff. Let's look at the x-intercept. We set the simplified numerator equal to 0. We set the simplified numerator equal to 0. I don't know why I just stuck a negative in front of that. <coughs> Um, x minus 3 is equal to 0. Again, that GCF of 2 doesn't matter. 2 doesn't equal 0. So I'm just concerned with the x minus 3 is equal to 0. So that means my x-intercept is 3. Now I'm going to write this as a point because you need to get in the habit of this being points. What? Because 2 doesn't equal 0. I mean, you can stick the 2 in front of that. If you do 2x minus 6 is equal to 0, you're going to get the same answer. Either way, you get the x equals 3. Or you should. You should. That's fine. That's fine. I don't have a problem with that. Okay. So our x-intercept is at 3, 0. Go ahead and plot that. For our y-intercept, we plug in 0 for x. Now, you have a choice here. You could plug that into the original problem, or you can plug it into the simplified problem. Honestly, I think it's easier to plug it into the original because 2x squared, 0 plugged into that is 0. 2 times x is 0 when x is 0. So all we've got on the top is negative 12. On the bottom is negative 12 because I plugged in 0 for all those x's, so my y-intercept is 1. Now, based on the minimal stuff that I have graphed right now and what I know about rational functions, I could go ahead and fill in the rest of my graph Okay, but I also I, I am going to talk about the behavior around the vertical asymptote. But first of all, I want you to notice that the vertical asymptote and the horizontal asymptote kind of breaks this up into uh, quadrants. Okay, it's not the same as our standard quadrant, but we kind of have four parts to our graph. And notice that we have points in the upper left and we have a point in the lower right. Okay, so based on what I know about rational functions, I know I'm going to have a Um, but let me talk about the behavior on the vertical asymptote for a second, okay? <clears throat> what I'm going to do, my vertical asymptote is at x equals 2. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick 
a number that is close to 2, and I'm going to plug it into the simplified version of my function. But when I plug it in, I'm not really plugging it in for the sake of figuring out what its value is. I just want to plug it in to find out whether it's a positive or a negative number. So I'm going to plug in the number 1.75 and the number 2.25. Okay. I'm going to plug those two numbers into my simplified version, which is 2 times x minus 3 over 3 times x minus 2. All right. Now, I'm not plugging them in for the sake of finding out what their value is. What I'm looking for is, is the result a positive or a negative number? So, 1.75 minus 3, is that positive or negative? 1.75 minus 3 is negative. So I've got 2 times a negative number on the top, so that's negative. On the bottom, 1.75 minus 2, is that positive or negative? Negative. So I've got 3 times a negative number, which is a negative. A negative divided by a negative is positive. Okay? So that means that on the right side of this vertical, or excuse me, the left side of this vertical asymptote, my function is positive. So I know that this is what my function is doing for this part of the graph. Okay, I'm going to connect my hole to my y-intercept, and it's going to <coughs> increase When we plug in 2.25, <coughs> excuse me, into the simplified version, we get, as Chase said, we get a negative on the top, we get a positive on the bottom, a negative divided by a positive is a negative, so that means on the right side of this vertical asymptote, my values are going to be negative. They're going to be headed towards negative infinity. So, I'm, oof, that looked horrible. I'm going to connect my x-intercept and I'm going to head towards negative infinity beside that vertical asymptote and then I'm going to approach my horizontal asymptote from the bottom make sure that you get arrows on the ends of all your curves and asymptotes. Okay. You may not be able to see mine very clearly but I do have arrows on the ends of all these. Your arrows can cross the asymptote. Okay. Well, then we would draw it the other way. And our x-intercept wouldn't be there. I promise. Hmm? Yes, yes. We don't, we didn't cross the horizontal asymptote right here. Okay? So this answer should not be positive. but it is possible.
you just don't want to go more than one unit over. 